Well, it's been a while since I flew a honeybee. That's for sure. This thing trimmed out here. Wow. Okay, so much for uh, that. Tried to fly inverted and had a blade strike. <laughs> well, now I remember that I actually should have put a blade deflection tab on the boom. I used to do that with my other helis back in the day. A tab allows the blade to actually hit the tab and then bounce over to keep it from hitting the boom and destroying it. I came up with that idea years ago when dampeners were kind of loose and sloppy on these helicopters and it worked pretty good. I have just forgot that the honeybee needed these. I've decided to go ahead and repair this honeybee by turning it into my hyperfly design. I'm going to call it the hyperbee. Well, the Hyperfly is the tail rotorless two-channel helicopter I invented for Kyosho years ago when I invented the ETRM, electric tail rotor motors for them. Well, I designed it so fixed-wing pilots could fly helis like airplanes and they didn't have to learn how to hover which in the days of no gyros was a lot of learning curve crashes. <laughs> the originals are on display at the San Diego Aerospace Museum and also the AMA Museum. I've actually converted quite a few of my model helicopters to the NOTAR. A lot of fun. Well, when Rory sent me this, it had two heavy tail rotor motors on it, which is a little bit heavy, I think, and it also caused the tail boom to flex and uh, gets close to the blade. So I got rid of that, and uh, I did that by cutting the tail boom, and then I inserted a rod into the forward side and glued that in there, and then I added a new piece of carbon fiber tube to the rear. This one I taped on, so it makes it removable, and I can install the TRM again. If I want to go back, but uh, I don't think I want to go back. <laughs> I glued two paper plates together to make them thick and then glued them to the boom. You need to place the concave side on the right hand side so to catch the air and to use the frisbee lift principle for sideways lift and forward flight, which also helps prevent it from pirouetting. Remember, this is for forward flight only, but it will hover in heavy winds. Also, uh, by using a heli with a speed control in it, which we actually didn't have in the beginning on the first hyper flies, that makes it pretty easy to land as the body torque is way reduced as you're coming down at uh, low throttle and then the heli can land easily like a model airplane. So let's go out and see if it flies as good as that hyper fly. I guess I'm going to call this the hyper bee. This is the honey bee. Give it a shot here today. Of course, it's a little cold and windy, but the sun is out. So let's see what happens.
So again, I designed this for Kyosho for folks who wanted to fly helis, but not learn to hover. Today with all the gyros and crutches, it's pretty easy to hover. Back in the day, it was challenging. And if you practice jockeying the throttle, you can make it do pirouettes if you want and still fly out of them. Uh, you can only do counterclockwise pirouettes though. <laughs> so if you understand how and why this works, you're going to have no problem. So if you have a busted tail rotor or boom, either an ETRM or belt driven, you can easily do this. Well, note this, the longer the boom, the smaller the plate has to be and your battery actually will last longer too without having to drive a tail rotor motor. Also, by using an electronic speed control, you can slow way down and land as there's very low body torque and actually none while auto-rotating. The tail simply weather vanes with the wind. <laughs> Here's something you can try for fun. And many of you have. In the past videos, we've had a lot of people try this. Well, I don't need no stinking tail rotor. So there you go. Thanks a lot for watching me today, folks. And have some fun, especially in these trying times. You know, if you're stuck at home, here's a project for you to do. So God bless, and we'll see you next time. This is the Night Flyer, signing off for now.